All right, so what I'm talking about here is once again the simplest approach of chronic liver disease. You're starting with the chronic liver disease evidenced by L for leukonidia. And second talk is once again the complications of the chronic liver disease, the portal hypertension, the P for phenomegaly. And third talk is the decomposition features, the ZAE, Zai, Phi Phi Tata. So John D the science and the encephalopathy. And immediately after that, yes, once again, the fourth talk, if you do it very, very well, the best sign, get some of the evidences, what is the underlying etiologies that can cause the chronic liver disease. I say the chronic liver disease is damaged by the most common in the A, B, C, D rule, and this is the incidence basically in UK. So A starts with the alcohol, B stands with the hepatitis B virus, C stands with the hepatitis C virus, and B for the drugs. And drugs, once again, you can put your mind or keep your mind on man, M A N once again M for methadone, M for methotrexate, M for imidrone, and M for nitrofurantoin. So these are the drugs basically that you can remember the A B C D role. Next to the A B C D that we should look for, yes, once again the some of the metabolic disorders. So most common emerging metabolic disorders like the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, emerging causes of yes the chronic liver disease. And next to the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, once again I said that H is W D A one A T D. It does mean the H is for Heritage hemochromatosis, WTB is Wilson's disease, and A1 is for alpha one in deficiency. And sometimes, yes, once again, the cystic fibrosis also the added to the metabolic causes causing the chronic liver disease. Next to the metabolic disorders, right, the, some of the important autoimmune disorders I called, right, the ARH, PVC, and PSC. It does mean the autoimmune hepatitis, primary epidermal cirrhosis, and also the primary sclerosing cholangitis. So, I know what I'm saying, yes, the fourth number point is very important right to look for some of the bedside evidences of underlying etiologies means that ABCD bundle pack then the metabolic disorder bundle packs and once again the autoimmune disorder bundle pack so we need to look for the underlying etiology so that we can treat the patient at the root of the level to to treat the underlying etiology so what i'm saying by that i just like to show some of the important clinical stigma right? what we have found in his case Alright, so with this, uh, right, the uh, respectful permission, so we want to show you some of the important features, right? Uh, can you come? Show me your hands. Alright. So you see some of the differences with my nails, alright? My nail color and his nail color. You see, his nail color turned into a white color. So whitening of the nail is the leukonite, yeah? So very easily, once again, you can diagnose is a leukonite, yeah? Nothing but the liver disease means the chronic liver disease chronically once again we got in yes the clubbing you see the clubbing so leukonychia with clubbing of course once again the chronic liver disease otherwise can you turn your hands turn, turn, turn yes turn your hands once again so uh, we are expecting that a lot of long list of stigma but he has nothing here at this moment all right so why do you listen very carefully now can you stretch your fingers stretch stretch your finger? So what we are looking for, we are getting sometimes the flaps, the flapping tremors, all right? The flapping tremors, once again, is a critical stigma right? at the bedside that we can get found in the encephalopathy. So as I said, the jaundice aside is an encephalopathy, these three important findings. So encephalopathy, these flaps can be present in any of the grades of and so it means the grade one, two, three, four. As I said, the some of the important findings that you are getting and you are trying to get. But he has no at this moment and so on. Now let's see his eyes. Can you look down, down, nicher the gun? Yes, he has some yellow tinge, very slight, but he has this one. The some of the yellow tinge, so yellowish. So once again, the jaundice. Deep button that All right. Deep button up, correct. Ulta. Two pure Very good. Up, up. So yes, some of the yellow tinges looked here. So he has got a jaundice, right? So we to show them. So, mind that there are long list of things that you will do for abdomen examinations. I will not go for some of the detail of the abdomen examinations. But I like to show what I say. The starting with the number one, the alpha leukonychia, that you found out in leukonychia, you confirmed in chronic liver disease. And second, with the complicated by, here's the portal hypertension, that is the plenomegaly. So I put my hands only for plenomegaly, right? So, so once again, shash, shash, lumbar shash, right, shash, 
You see, right. I got my spleen here. Yes. Our shash. Shash, shash, shash. Once again. So I put my hands here. Yes. I got the spleen here. Here. Shash, shash, shash. Yes. So it's around, around in, the, in between the midline, you can say, right? Sometimes we say, right, the spleen, if it crossed the midline, we call it massive splenomegaly. Right, so massive means that cross the midline. Midline crossed massive splenomegaly. Usually what happened in chronic liver disease, my dear? In chronic liver disease, usually the spleen is not that much enlarged. Yes, usually mild to moderate type of spleen is enlarged. So you can give some of the evidences of some of the percussion. You see, this is tympanic. Some of the dull percussion nodes. So this is over the spleen. All right, so spleen is enlarged. All right. So once again, this splenomegaly is nothing but the hyperspleenism. I mean, one of the important consequences of portal hypertension. So splenomegaly. So this is the thing that we have found. He has got the portal hypertension, and this portal hypertension also can be evident by the long list of features. And we have already done the upper endoscopy. We found some of the esophageal varices and the, also the bending, bending or three times. All right, three times bending already has been done. And this young man has got a right such a chronic liver disease last 15 years, and we got the underlying etiology. The hepatitis B virus was the underlying cause, and he is getting the treatment last 15 years. And now at this moment he is good, right? And at this uh, this time, can you see what this skin? Linear silver, liver linear silver. All right, right. So this time also he presented with the some of the blood vomiting, right? Some of the hematomas. <coughs> so we, we we managed him conservatively, and uh, we have a plan, right, to to see the once again the esophageal varices if there is something. So we do once again another session for uh, variceal band. We call the endoscopic variceal band ligation. So EVL is one of the important treatment as well as the prophylaxis for very self bleeding in the case of chronic liver disease. So yes, once again, the, as I talked about the starting the uh, first talk, yes, once again, the chronic liver disease, the leukonite we found, along with one of the other important findings, that the clubbing that we have found. Once again, second talk, right, there is the portal hypertension, plenomegaly. We have found that, yes, is a moderate type of splenomegaly. And he has got also the jaundice, having ascites, and, but at this moment, it doesn't have the, any features of encephalopathy. So having the jaundice and encephalopathy or ascites, so he has got the decompensation. So we can put together and make a diagnosis. So decompensated chronic liver disease with portal hypertension and the underlying etiology was the hepatitis B virus. Yes, in our country like Bangladesh, right, the most important cause of hepatitis B. C is emerging cause, but yes, the drugs also, there are lots of possibilities, but once again, Provided that, yes, uh, Western peoples having the alcohol is the most common cause of chronic liver disease. I hope that my dear, these video clips and all some of the important critical features will be really, really helpful for your own clinical practice or maybe preparing of the some of the post exams or whatever, the ways that you can utilize them all them together for your own benefits and for the patient's benefits as well. I hope that you enjoyed it too much. Thank you, thank you very much. And thanks to my patients. He's a very enthusiastic, very cooperative person and helped us to show and to give some of the important things for all of the people that those are watching. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Danica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs>